Hey y'all, I figured I would come on here today and talk to you about catheters. I get asked so many questions about catheters and supplies and things like that, so I figured I'd get on here and let y'all see a few of the catheters that I have tried and what works for me, what might work for somebody else, and all that. I have the internal urinary diversion called Indiana Pouch. It's made out of part of my intestine, and I have a stoma on my belly that I have to cath in order to empty. My bladder and urethra were removed because I had interstitial cystitis so severe that there was just nothing else they could do. So, if you want to learn more about all that, I've got other videos that you can watch, so have fun. <laughs> but anyway, this is a pure catheter. This one is a pre-lubricated one, okay? As you can see, there's stuff on here, and that's the lubricant. The eyelets, you can't see because of the gunk on it, but anyway. A lot of your pre-lubed catheters come with a little grip thing. Some of them are just a, like a little sleeve. This one's actually a rubbery piece. Um, you use that to hold it instead of touching the catheter and these pre-lubricated pre catheters are extremely slick and they're not they're water-based so it's not gross but um, this is the funnel end the, there's one thing I don't like about this catheter and it is the funnel end and I'll get to that here in just a little bit this one is a cure catheter also all of these catheters are 14 for inch, 16 inch male straight tip catheters. The eyelets on this I love because they are polished. They don't have any rough edges around them or anything else. They're really smooth. The catheter is smooth and flexible. The funnel end is just right for the catheter tip syringes. And I'll show you all that here in a minute. Another ca catheter. What do I do with it? This is Magic 3. Okay. And it's another 16 inch, 14 French catheter. And this is what they look like. They're really super soft. I can't get them into my Indiana pouch a lot because of the fact that my pouch has spasms. And whenever it has a spasm, it's hard to get a catheter in, so I needed something a little more firm than this one. Um, the eyelets are okay. There's, they're just too small. I really can't get anything out because the eyelets are way too small for me. And then here's your funnel end. But again, this is a comfortable catheter, especially if you have a bladder. This one will probably be great for you. And this one is Coloplast, okay? It's another 16 inch, 14 French catheter. I know a lot of these look exactly the same, but they're not. I personally do not like Coloplast, and it's mostly because the eyelets. These eyelets have rough edges. They're cut out, not polished. The Cure catheters are polished, so there's no roughness or anything. I have cut myself cut my bladder when I had it, my urethra, and when I started using these for my Indiana pouch, it would cut my pouch or my stoma as I was inserting or pulling it out. I've even cut my fingers on this, so I, I just, to me, I don't like these. But not everybody has the same issue with these that I did, so it's a personal choice. The funnel end is good, okay? Now, the reason why the funnel end is important is because when you irrigate your Indiana pouch, or if you're doing bladder installation treatments, you want to make sure that you get everything inside that needs to be inside. Your medications for your bladder installations need to go in here instead of the toilet. When you irrigate your Indiana pouch, you want all the water to go into your Indiana pouch and not all over the toilet. With this one, this is the cure catheter that's pre-lubricated. The tip of it, I don't like, but I work with it anyway. Put the catheter tip syringe inside like this. You push 
your medication or your water in. And if you've got a pouch, like I do, the internal, you're supposed to pull back on it. And what that does, it helps move things around inside your pouch because you've got a lot of um, mucus in your pouch because your intestines secrete. And since the Indiana pouch is made from part of your intestine, you get the secretion, which looks gross. It looks like a bunch of boogers when they come out, to be honest with you. And if you pee in a cup at a doctor's office, they kind of look at you really weird. <laughs> but that's okay. It's part of it. You have to explain to them, but they get it. Um, if for some reason you cannot get this tip to fit snug in your catheter, there's this little blue piece that comes with these. You put it on top and then you can insert it and have a good seal around the catheter and the syringe. And you push your medications or your water through like that. And it's real simple. Now, these are not the only catheters out there. It's just a few I have on hand that I show examples of. There are female catheters. I don't have any to show you, but they're about half the length of a regular catheter. And they're more compact where you can just stick it in your pocket. Um, some come lubricate, pre-lubricated, some do not. And that's with all catheters. There are some catheters that come with a lubrication pack in it. And with that one, you bust the package and it shoots the lubricant over the catheter which is pretty much what is already on my pre-lubed catheter I just don't have to bust the package um, I get asked a lot of questions like well, where do you get your supplies this that and another right now I'm going through new motion medical it's in you motion all one word um, they're great they call you ahead of time to let you know, hey, your package is on the way. Do you need anything? You know, if you want to change something, you can change it. Um, I just recently went from using this cure catheter to the pre-lubricated because I have allergic reactions to a lot of lubricants. The lubricant that I was getting, which was little individual lubricants, was um, Applicare. That's the only one I have tried that I was not allergic to. My supply company can no longer get those, so I had to switch to the pre-lubricated catheters, and I don't have a reaction to it. Um, it's a little hard to get used to because, whoops, <laughs> because of the fact that it is very slick, and I'm not used to using this, but I'm getting the hang of it. I just recently switched to this one. Um, now you don't have to use this thing. It's just there to keep, to help insert the catheter and to keep your fingers from getting germs all over the place, which I always wash my hands before and after anyways, which is what you're supposed to do. Um, but it, it, it gets, it's not sticky like a lot of lubricants. This is water-based, so it's very soft. It makes your hands feel a little soft, <laughs> but you got to wash your hands either way. Um, these syringes, my supply company can only send me two a month, but you can wash these out and reuse. And if you have to irrigate or do medications or whatever through a catheter, these are awesome. Um, and they're all about the same. I've not, I've always got this type of cat catheter tip syringe so, from all the supply companies I've tried and I really like them. Um, and if, when you get done you can either put that over the blue tip or if you don't use the blue tip you can throw the blue tip away and put that cap back on. Um, I went through when I first started cathing back when I got diagnosed with interstitial cystitis I was using the cure or not cure shoot the coloplast catheters. I've always used male catheters. Now if you're starting out to learn how to cath yourself for the females, males, I, you, you can see everything. Um, females 
whenever you start cathing, I highly recommend you get the 16 inch male catheters because of the fact that a lot of people, when they start cathing, you have to sit in the floor, have a bowl you don't use anymore, a jug or water bottle, whatever. And when you're sitting, you have to sit on the floor to see what you're doing, prop a mirror up, because that little booger's hard to find. But these are the best way to start cathing because of the flexibility, the length, because you're going to want this end in a container of some sort. So that way, when you start to pee through this, it don't go all over your bathroom. So what I do, let's pretend this is an empty bottle. I put this end in when I started learning the cath, and then I put this end into my urethra. Now, with females, you really don't have to go in very far in your bladder. Once the pee starts coming through, you're in far enough because your bladder empties from top to bottom. For those of us that have the internal urinary diversion, we have to go all the way in. That means this whole 16 inch catheter has to go all the way in to where this end is touching your belly where your stomach is. The reason for that is because if you don't have the male catheter and it's not all the way in, you're not going to get all the pee out. Um, this has to go all the way in. Now, I've seen videos where people have been using female catheters for their Indiana pouch. They're not emptying. They're only getting maybe just a little itty bitty bit out of their Indiana pouch. I also seen a video of this one lady when she cathed, she was pressing around her belly because her doctor told her to and said that that's the only way to get the pee out. You do not have to squeeze your belly. These catheters work on their own because of the eyelets. So there's no need to press your belly. Now, I irrigate two times a day with sterile water. Um, you can also use distilled water but I would not recommend using any water at all from your sink. Even if you've got like the Brita or Pure water filters, don't use it. Use either sterile water that your doctor can prescribe to you or get a gallon jug of distilled water. Like I said, I have to irrigate twice a day and irrigation means I take this, fill it with my sterile water, I put the catheter into my stoma all the way, and just as the urine starts coming out, I plug this into the catheter, push all the water in, and then I pull back on the syringe up till I'm about right here. And what this does, it helps move, swish, slosh everything around in your Indiana pouch in order to get a lot of mucus out. So once you pull this away, you're going to be peeing a lot more because you're getting all that stuff moving around and it's going to come out. And I'm telling you what, that if you're having spasms in your Indiana pouch, that feels so good. It, it's amazing how good it feels to have it flushed out. People ask me all the time, well don't it hurt to cat through your belly? No, it does, it does not hurt. The reason it does not hurt is because of the fact that the stoma has no nerve endings. So you're not feeling it at all. And I promise you, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Um, and the Indiana pouch doesn't empty from top to bottom like your bladder does. It empties from bottom to top. Don't ask me why. It's weird. It's just the way it works. Um, now, I have had some UTIs. Um, whenever I go through a UTI, I irrigate more often. I'm going this Friday for the second time to the hospital to get really good and flushed out. And what they do, hold on, what they do whenever they flush me out, they will put a dilator into my stoma just to stretch it, just to touch, it does not hurt. And then I get the hydro distension and cystoscopy just like you guys do with the IC and bladder cancer. Um, he 
fills it up with water while he's looking around and everything. And while water's going in, water's coming out to flush me out. Okay, it gets rid of tons of mucus, which I didn't know I had that much mucus till I got this done the first time. I was able to actually help my doctor to do this procedure. It is really cool, and I plan on vi videoing this next procedure so that y'all can see what I'm talking about. But whenever I went through that, I didn't realize I had that much mucus in there that was causing me to have UTIs. My urine stank. There were there was air coming out of my stoma, and it just it was making me miserable. So I went and had that done, and it just oh, it felt amazing. I was so relaxed. But it is very important to irrigate at least twice a day because it will help reduce your chances of getting a UTI. Now with people who have their bladder, um, I know a lot of you do bladder installation treatments. I used to do bladder installation treatments. Um, it contained heparin, sodium bicarbonate, lidocaine, and liquid and lidocaine gel. I would mix that stuff up, push it through the catheter, and then pull the catheter out because I didn't want any of that running out. They recommend you hold it in your bladder for at least 20 minutes. If you can go longer, good. If not, it's okay. Now, if you're self-cathing because of retention or whatever the issue is, I recommend flushing your bladder out often. At least once, maybe twice a day, especially if you're prone to getting UTIs. And what you'll do, you'll fill this up with sterile water or distilled water, push it into your bladder. There's no need to pull back on this. You just pull this off of the syringe or the catheter and let it let your bladder empty. Now it, it does make a difference. It feels so good having all that rinsed out. It's like a bladder wash. Um, I've told so many people to do this, and they're like, wow, it really does feel good. So there's a recommendation. Talk to your doctor about it and get everything set up. Um, if y'all have any questions at all, feel free to ask me. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. So you can look me up and message me that way because I don't always get my messages off of YouTube. I don't know why, but I don't. But if you all have any questions at all, I'm an open book. Just feel free to ask and I'll try to help you out. I hope this video was very <laughs> well taken, I guess. I um, hope you all, you all learned something today that can benefit you. Um, and I'll try to make another video here soon. Y'all have a great day.